Everyone tells you that crow pose is meant to be the easiest arm balance to learn. I disagree. Yet the vast majority of beginners make at least one of these four errors that keep their crow firmly grounded. And even for those who can do crow, you might just be making your life way harder than it needs to be. The good news is these things are very quick and easy to fix if you just know what they are. So in this video, I'll show you the four things that I see students get wrong all of the time, and more importantly, how to fix them. All arm balances, including crow, are the same as a set of scales. You've got your center point, your hands on the floor, and then weight on either side. So in crow, that's your feet, legs, and hips on one side, and your chest and head on the other. And finding success in your crow pose is about balancing the scales. From your starting position, your weight is all on the feet side of the scales, right? And pretty far away from your hands. So it makes sense that in order for the feet to float, you've got to add more weight to the other side of the scales, and that means sending your chest and head forward and about the same distance as your feet are from your hands. That is nowhere near your fingertips. So the first reason that your crow isn't flying yet, you're not shifting your weight forward enough. Energy flows where the gaze goes, so you need to look forward and think of sending your body weight in the same direction. And yes, that is the scary direction. So get a big squishy cushion right out in front of you. Notice that before you go anywhere, the weight starts in the heels of your hands. So send your body weight forwards as you feel the weight even out across the hand. Grip hold of the floor for extra strength and keep puffing up your upper back. So that's the first error, but annoyingly, this isn't gonna work if you're still making these next errors too. So without further ado, moving on to number two. Bones are stronger than muscles. And in various balancing movements from handstand to crow, we can utilize our bones natural strength to not only find balance easier, but to need less strength to do so as well. It's exactly why something like a handstand is infinitely easier than let's say a planche. And notice that I said easier, not easy. So in crow pose, we need to utilize this bone stacking technique and ensure that our elbows are over our wrists before we try to find balance. That's going to let your forearm stack vertically to support your body weight. Error number two is not aligning the elbows over the wrists. So set up a camera from the side to film your next attempt. Watch it back and see if you're aligning in the way that you think you are. Visual feedback is super helpful for you to identify where you are going wrong because so often we don't even realize the errors that we're making. Of these two final errors, the final one is a little bit controversial, so I'll leave that one to discuss last, which brings me on to number three. So yes, crow pose is very much like a set of scales, but it is also very much like a shelf. The backs of your arms are the shelf where the inner of the knees rest. And just like your beloved decorations at home, the more level that you manage to hang your shelf on the wall, the more likely that your stuff won't fall off of it. A big error many people make when trying to crow is not bending their arms enough. If your elbow is only slightly bent, you've given yourself one very steep, slidey shelf to try and balance your legs onto. Hence why crane pose, where the arms are fully straight, is so much harder than crow. If you bend the elbows more, say to around 90 degrees, you'll give yourself a flatter, less slidey shelf where you have a much better chance of staying put. Yes, that means moving your face in the scary direction towards the mat. But a big cushion here in front of your face really is your best friend here to allow you to explore these adjustments. I feel the real issue behind these last three errors is fear, and the cushion is the key to overcoming that. Oh, and an extra tip, if your knees are constantly falling off your arms, try squeezing your thighs in towards each other and see if that helps. So finally, controversial number four. I don't feel the need to do some sort of elaborate science experiment for us to agree that wide and short things tend to balance easier than tall and slim things. This box is far easier to balance itself as opposed to this broomstick. So if we apply this idea to our crow pose, the more we bundle ourselves up into a narrower, taller space, the harder our balance becomes. The lower that we can keep our hips and the wider our shape, the easier balance can be found. So controversial 
error number four is placing the knees too far up the triceps. Taking the knees lower down towards the elbows allows the hips to sit lower and your body weight to be spread over a larger surface area, making balance much easier and the strength demands lessened. I say this is controversial because really the location of exactly where you place the knees is very much a personal preference. There is no right versus wrong, but placing your knees higher up the triceps might be making life harder for you. Perhaps you're making life harder for yourself in a lot of postures. Check out this video next to see the three biggest mistakes that you'll want to avoid in your practice.